Hi, folks. That thing is on, right? Um, yeah, so uh, let's start uh, back in 2004 um, when I started to do, uh, to do Plone. Um, the journey started uh, for me with uh, Plone 2.0. Um, I was a university student in my first years, um, and I had a pet project. Um, I was really into um, American authors uh, over like a um, specific um, magazine. And um, I was really interested in like translating those articles um, in, into German. So um, I got together with a few people and we started to create a website. At first, we created an HTML website. Um, but over the time, we added more articles like every day or so. And that became a problem. So um, I started to look around and um, I started to do um, PHP, uh, <laughs> MySQL, and started to build like kind of my own CMS, right? Um, then it occurred to me that I was like reinventing the wheel. I was running into the first walls in my career. Much, many, many others will, will follow. Um, I will share a few, a few others with, with you. Um, and I started to look around for like real content management systems, right? Um, so I somehow run into Plone uh, and also Zoop. And back then in 2004, um, I was really, really impressed by both Zoop and Plone. Uh, what, what you could do in Zoop was that you could like add a wiki with, with just one mouse click, right? That, that was a thing back then, right? I, I know I'm, 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 I'm old, but uh, <laughs> that was something that impressed me because I was used to like having to set up like PHP, MyS, MySQL, and uh, like doing the database connection and all those kind of things, right? Uh, and it did not stop there. In Plone, you could do like many things through the web. It was easy for me to pick up because you could just like search for something for a string or so, and then um, just copy that over and get started, right? Um, so that was something that, that um, uh, appealed to me. So, um, so what make the young Timo or young university student pick up a new like programming language? Because I was used to like Java and PHP, but not Python. Um, a new database like the ZODB. Um, I was used to, to relational databases and, and overall in UCMS, right? Um, the thing is that, that Plone was really the hot thing back then, right? It was really like, it was like standing out. Uh, if you compare it for like, uh, with other systems that I looked into with PHP, MySQL based system, uh, Plone had um, as a first, at one of the first systems, uh, what you see is what you get editor, right? Epos, who, who recalls that, that that was the first Plone editor, <laughs> a few, right? Um, many, many followed, but but that was something pretty unique, right? If you looked at like say Typo three back then, um, they had like plain 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 input fields, right? Where you could like maybe maybe add formatting or stuff, but but no like what you see is what you get, right? Um, the theme was uh, by Limi was was pretty um, uh, cutting edge back then. Uh, do you recall like the, the 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 navigation with the with the CSS tabs? That was, that was, when I saw that first, that was pretty advanced back then, right? <laughs> um, it was so advanced that like, one of my friends actually copied that for his own website, and even Wikipedia copied those tabs, right? Um, so that was really like a cool thing. And we had like all, uh, uh, lots of other like optimizations, like for instance, like search autocomplete, right? That was also something where Plone was, was, um, was earlier than, than most other systems. Um, but that was like long, long time ago. Um, and time flies. Over the past 15 years, I came for like the fancy stuff, um, but I stayed for other things. Um, Eric, uh, in his keynote, already mentioned that, so I will quickly go through that. Um, the things that we like about Plone, right, is it's like its scalability, its maintainability. Um, we basically allow upgrades from Plone 1.0 or even maybe 0.1. I don't know. I never never tried, <laughs> um, but we offer upgrades from all Plone versions, right? That's also pretty unique uh, if you compare it to other systems. Um, you can easily scale scale uh, Plone. Um, I, I once shared a uh, the office with a Typo 3 agency uh, agency, and I once asked them, "Hey, how do you like scale your systems, right?" And what they told me was like they were looking like that at me and were saying, uh, "We we buy a bigger server, right?" And like Plone has all that baked in. Our security record is really outstanding, right? We all know about that. that we have the best security track record of all CMSs. No zero day exploit in 15 years. That's really awesome. Um, one of the other things that I really valued over time is the unique set and combination of permissions, workflow, and traversal in, in Plone. Um, as a consultant, I saw many, many teams and good teams struggling really hard um, with building something like that, that we have, that we take for granted in Plone and Zope, right? I, I, I saw teams 
reinventing the wheel over and over again, right? Um, so that's, that's, that's really also unique in my opinion. Uh, the number of available add-on products, right? We have thousands of available add-on products. When I go to a client and I don't know what to expect and they ask me, hey, can Plone do that? Can Plone do that? I usually like either I know that um, add-ons exist or I look them up and usually Plone never like failed me, right? There are ton still tons of add-ons uh, available for everything. Uh, maybe they're outdated, maybe you have to like migrate them to Plone 5 or whatever, but, but they are there, right? People um, did that before. Another thing that also Eric mentioned and that everybody mentioned is, is the Plone community, right? I mean, we all love being part of the Plone community. It, it, it like sends us all across the globe, right? And meeting nice people. And I'm always looking forward to, to Plone meetings, to meet, meet like nice friends and like people that became friends over the time, right? Um, another thing that's really important is, is the Plone Foundation, that we have a sta stable legal entity that governs the, the Plone community. So if we start a new project like uh, Ramon with Guillotina or maybe with Walto or also like existing um, project with Pyramid, they choose um, to become part of the, of the Plone family, right, for a reason. If you start a new project from the start, uh, from the scratch, like the JavaScript project or whatever, and you're not Facebook or Google, then you have to put a lot of effort into those things. We usually consider that to be like boring if you're on board and doing like all that stuff, but that's really important for Plone. Um, though over the last like 15 years, that's like lots of time, as I already mentioned, um, lots of things um, changed. So to summarize, we have a unique set of features in Plone and a unique community and a good basis, right? But we also have a large code base that makes it hard to adapt to changes, right? Philip uh, put a tremendous amount of, of, of work and others into Python 3, right? And again, I said that before, but thank you very much, Philip, for your work. That's highly appreciated. Um, though with that, we saw how much work it was, right? Um, so that's, that, that's, that's one problem. Um, the other problem is we're kind of like growing old as a, as a community, right? I mean, it's, it, it gets harder and harder for us to like attract like new developers, right? If you, uh, at, at, um, if you look at, for instance, at least if you compare our community with like JavaScript communities, right, where they easily have like a few thousand uh, attendees at, at, at um, as, as conferences, right? So um, I think there were some fundamental changes in in web technology which I would like to share. Um, some of them. Uh, some of them I already mentioned last year, so I will quickly go through them. Right. One of the important changes was that. Uh, Mobile overtook desktop in like around 2015, 2016. In 2015, Google reported that um, in, in 10 countries, including the US and Japan, more people were, uh, were um, using uh, the search, uh, Google search from mobile devices um, than from desktops, right? Um, if you look at a regular website these days, uh, usually more people uh, um, access it via mobile. Another thing that's... Um, Related to that is speed is king. Um, there's this re research um, about what time people um, accept, uh, what waiting time people accept, uh, ex um, accept uh, when vi visiting a website. So um, the research, research shows that after th three seconds, you usually use one third of your users. After another two seconds, you, you, use, uh, you lose another thir uh, one third of your users. And then it goes on from there. And keep in mind that this is independent of your device, right? It doesn't matter if you are in a fast internet connection or if you are, are in 3D somewhere, uh, uh, wherever, right? Um, so I recommend to go to webpagetest.org and just try like your regular website and see how long it actually takes to load on 3G, right? And if you, are, if you, if you manage to be under three seconds, that's, also, that's already not bad, right? But you might already lose one third of your users. Um, there's also, uh, also Google added uh, like a penalty to slow sites um, uh, and downrank them if they're, if they're slow, right? So people do not expect um, slow websites any longer. Um, another important change is that JavaScript is everywhere. GitHub does a report every, every year on the most um, successful projects, right? And JavaScript has more than double the number of commits than Python in terms of like pull requests. Um, in 2018, web development means JavaScript. Um, I will come to that later. Another development is that the web is everywhere, that web technology is everywhere. Um, five to ten years ago, um, web, web applications began to replace um, uh, 
uh, desktop applications, right? Things that were like written for, for Windows or, or Linux, they were replaced by web applications because like, it, it doesn't matter which, which, um, which device you use, right? Uh, about like two to three years ago, um, web technology started to take over mobile development with technologies like Cordova or uh, React Native or PWAs. Today you can write um, native applications with native speed and, and the uh, native uh, look, um, look and feel uh, with web technology, right? Um, that's a major change. Uh, another, uh, another field where web technology starts to um, get adopted is actual desktop applications. So, you can write desktop applications with web technologies. Examples are Visual Studio Code, for instance, Atom Editor, or Slack. Um, so the web is literally everywhere. Um, another thing is open source became mainstream. Um, I think Plone is also is, is still pretty unique in, in terms of like we are we have small to medium companies and we don't don't have any large company that dominates the, the community, right? Which is awesome. But if you compare that to like usually successful projects, for instance, in a JavaScript world, there are companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft behind them, right? Um, and open source really became mainstream. Uh, when I started with, with, with open source in 2004, and others started way earlier, it was a, somehow a niche for, for like maybe nerds. But today, um, open source is really big business, right? Um, so one of the things that I forgot to mention, I, I, I mentioned those things last year in, in my um, talk in, in Barcelona, but one of the things that I, that I forgot to mention uh, that also changed um, is actually the expectations of, of our users. Uh, I was focusing on the technical terms because I'm, at heart I'm still like a developer even though I spend most of my time these days in other things, but um, I tend to focus on the technical stuff, but I, leave, uh, uh, I left out the expectations of the, of the users that, that actually changed with those technology changes, of course. So what, what do users expect these days? They expect a, blo a, a blasting fast uh, uh, loading website, like, like Google or, or Facebook, right? They expect a search like Google, right? That's like, um, if you talk about, like, with people about search, they always say, yeah, it's easy, just do what Google does, right? Easy peasy. Um, when, when you build an application or an internet application, um, they expect it to be like Facebook, right? Um, um, so Facebook is actually like a competitor to like, some a competitor to like pro internet, right? So we're even competing with, with those um, companies. So um, page speed and loading time are incredibly um, important. So Erico gave a talk about, uh, about he used Gatsby JS um, to speed up um, his website and also like the de development process. Um, that's an example of, of our, our kit concept blog. And uh, with Gatsby, uh, Gatsby is a static site generator. And um, the two cool things about Gatsby is that at first uh, it has like all the latest um, uh, optimizations for page speed included, right? Everything you could imagine, it's, it's, it's there out of the box. You get a page speed of like 98 or 99. Uh, from PageSpeed Insight by Google out of the box from, from Gatsby. Um, second thing is it's built in React. So you can use the rich React ecosystem both on generating the content and on, and on the front end, right? Um, so we, we start using it for, for the blog page and I will, I will briefly show you how I think a modern like, website should work. You see that it, like, it, it loads the website Instantaneously, and that was I recorded that yesterday evening in in my in my hotel room, and the the internet connection is really really crappy, um, and you see how fast that loads, right? Like other screencasts that I did, I had to wait to come here, but that one is really really quick, and you can add like nice animations to like make it fancy for people, right? Um, so that was the first group of users. I think that this is what what people today expect from a modern website, right? Um, it's the second group who's uh, uh, maybe our most important target groups are the editors, right? The editors that are, that are working with Plone on a regular basis every day. They're basically our ambassadors, right? If they like Plone, they will go around in their, in their companies and their organizations and tell everybody how great Plone is, right? If they dislike Plone, they will tell people how, how, how badly Plone sucks, right? And that will lead to, to, to maybe a, com a company or organization uh, abandon Plone, right? An intuitive uh, editing experience is, is super important in my opinion. Um, I talked about Epos and Kupo back then, right? And 
I talked about how, how cutting edge that was back then, but if you look at editing today, we're, we're using TinyMC, and TinyMC, TinyMC is fine. It's, it, it's, it does its job, right? But it's not that we're, separate, that we're standing out from the systems. That, like, everybody's using TinyMC everywhere, right, or other systems. We're just, like, as good as anybody else, right? But if you look um, around a bit, um, then you see... Um, Solutions like Medium.com. Medium.com is a blog platform um, founded by one of the Twitter uh, co-founders. And they put a tremendous amount of, of work into their UX to make it really, really user-friendly and super easy for people to start blogging. Um, and I think they reinvented, uh, they reinvented in-place editing. So I will show you how, how easy it is to, to create a blog post, right? So you just say, create a new blog post, and you start typing immediately. The first, um, the first uh, line is, is actually the, the title. The second line is the description. Then you can add this, this add button, and you can add like images or uh, tw uh, tweets or YouTube videos, just like that. Um, if you have an image, you can change the appearance. Um, if you want to add the image caption, you can just like click in there. It's super intuitive, right? Um, so, so in my opinion, this is how, how modern, uh, how the modern editing experience should look like. Unfortunately, this is like closed source, right? Um, there are open source clones for that, though, um, but I will come to, to that later. Another thing is uh, Gutenberg. Gutenberg is a project by, by WordPress. Um, WordPress used to have like lots of page composition tools, right? They have like something like Mosaic, but with far more features. Um, and they have like three or four of that, right? And it's really impressive if you look at that. And Gutenberg is, is an approach uh, to have in, I think, WordPress 5, uh, a, a unified like uh, core um, add-on product for, for page composition. And it's quite nice. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not a, 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 as intuitive as, um, as the Medium Editor. It has like far more, uh, more features, as you can see here. Um, but it's not bad. It's written in React, and it's open source, right? Um, so you can see you can add an image here, you can upload it. Um, basically the same that, that, that you can do with, uh, with, with Medium, right? Like a few different choices, but, but basically that's, that's it. So you can do the same and you can choose the, how the image appears. Um, the third target group that is important is developers. I mentioned that earlier, right? Um, if you, have a, like, if you want to attract new developers, um, you have to compete with all the other systems that are out there. And let's have a look at the development experience that, that, um, that modern JavaScript developers have. Um, so that's, that's Create React App. But it's similar. It, it doesn't matter if you use uh, React uh, with Create React App or uh, Angular CLI or Vue CLI. It's all the same. What you basically do is you install a Node, the Node Package Manager. Then you say npm install whatever you want. And then you say uh, yarn install or npm install. And then you start running um, yarn start. That will start your development server. And it will automatically uh, fire up the browser on the left side. Now it's there. Uh, that's, that's a demo app. And now you can inline uh, um, edit the, uh, the, the code. And once you hit save, um, it will automatically um, show up on the, on the left side. Um, but that's, that's only the start, right? You can, you can of course, like make the editor autosave, and then it will, uh, will automatically do that. Um, and it actually, it actually works with the, auto, with, with the autosave if you want it. But the really cool thing um, about Create React App is it, it has something that's called hot module reloading, right? So the problem is if you, if you have a more complex application and say you, you, you uh, go through, uh, you don't have the front page, but you uh, navigate to another uh, uh, to another uh, uh, page, and then you open an overlay, right? And and say you want to like change something in the overlay. What usually will happen if you reload the application, it will go to the start again, right? But um, together with 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 uh, Redux and and React, uh, it allows you to go um, to go exactly to that um, state that the application had. So the application can reload and keep the state that you had. So if you go to another route. Um, open an overlay, the reload will keep the overlay open because that's part of the state of the application. And you can even do things like time traveling, so go back and forth, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. But that's, that's we are competing basically um, with, with that developer experience, right? Um, so most of what I showed here is, is actually open source, right? So, except like the medium editor, which has clones. So we have all those things at our hands. Um, 
we, we can provide users with, with a state-of-the-art user experience like Google and Facebook does, right? Because they're basically open sourcing their stack. Both Google and, and Facebook are completely open sourcing their, their core technologies, right? Because they're not making money with, um, with web technology, but with, with ads, right? With, our, with all our data. Um, uh, we, can, we can provide state-of-the-art editing experience. Uh, with the Medium Editor, uh, Facebook um, published uh, Draft.js, which we use for, uh, for the Voltor or Pazanaga Editor. Um, the Gutenberg Editor that I showed is open source, it's written in React. We have the Ori Editor, which I didn't show, but Nathan started to work on that to integrate that. It's like also a full comp page composition tool. So we have many like, different uh, libraries to, to provide users with a far better user experience than we have right now. Um, we can also provide developers with state-of-the-art JavaScript development environment um, with, uh, with Volto, right? Because it's based on React, and it, and it does what, what I just showed you. So wouldn't it be great if we could combine what I just showed you and take all those libraries, um, sorry, um, oops, and take all those libraries uh, and combine that with the stability of of Plone, right? And the reliability and the maintainability of Plone. So, so take the best parts of Plone out and combine them with, with the stuff that I just showed you. Um, we, had, we had JavaScript, or we have JavaScript in Plone, right? Um, our first start with JavaScript, Ramon is already <laughs> smiling. Um, so we had our start with JavaScript, right? It was markup and resource registry. Um, who here likes the, working with the resource registry? Still smiling? <laughs> no, just, ki just, just, ki just kidding, just kidding. It, 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 uh, I promise, it, it, it won't be around, right? Uh, I will, I will s tell a bit about the story uh, about resource registry, right? I have a conf conf confession to make. I'm standing here and I'm like telling that for, for a few years that you should all move to, to JavaScript. But I was really reluctant to, to make the transition myself from Python to JavaScript. One thing is, I, I really love Python, right? And I was always skeptical about all those JavaScript approaches. The first JavaScript approach was KSS, right? Who, who recalls KSS here? Who, who tried it out? OK, I never tried it. I, I, never, I never liked it. I never liked the approach. I, I, never, had, I never thought that this would like, work, right? And um, there were really, yeah, great concept and really, really smart people, right? Really smart people that were working on that. Um, but I was always reluctant. Sa same was true for um, when I met Ro uh, when I met uh, Rob in Munich at the at the, at the sprint. Right? He came to me like enthusiastic, like he always is. I have a new thing, and this is like markup and like pattern slip. I don't know what it was back then. Um, and he wanted to like build new widgets for Plone, right? And I was like, what I did always like I was skeptical about that. I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, Rob is always. I actually did a project with Rob, uh, and he he uh, with Rock. Sorry, did I say Rob? With Rock, Rock, Rock Gavas. So I did a project with with Rock um, a, a few years earlier, and he also like already dragged everything, the new stuff in there, right? It worked out fine, and he's a super smart guy, um, so, so so all good. But I was like kind of a bit 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 skeptical, and the problem is that um, we started to pull in JavaScript uh, libraries and frameworks from all over the place, right? Um, and if you have like lots of different libraries, you can't just like ship them individually like we used to in the old resource registry, right? You will end up with like doing 300 like uh, HTTP requests in your website, so that, that won't scale. Not even with HTTP2, right? Um, so what you need to do is you you need to bundle the things. Um, the problem is that if you if you use a bundler like we did uh, in in markups and pattern libs and which we do today as well in in Volto, um, is that you can only do that externally, right? It's something that you run on on command line, um, uh, and that will break your through the web editing and the add-on installations, right? Because if an add-on has to install JavaScript or CSS, uh, you can't do that like through the web, right? Because you need to run the bundle. Uh, the, the bundling um, to get the bundle back. If you don't bundle, then you get a slow application. So, so it's, not, it's not working, right? And Ramon and Victor were the first uh, folks to run into that problem when they implemented the um, Barcelona theme, um, 4.5, right? Um, so we sat together um, at the uh, at Sorrento, right? And uh, Victor and Ramon were struggling hard uh, of implementing uh, Barcelona. Um, and we didn't have any, any way out of that, right? Because, I mean, on the one hand, there was, was Rock. He wanted to, like, I think his idea was just to run the bundling externally. 
and we, but we couldn't build, we couldn't build a theme uh, and, and maintaining the, um, uh, the uh, through the web and uh, extensibility story and add-on story of, of Flown. So we got into a heated discussion and like kind of a fight. Um, and um, at the end, um, Ramon, I think with help from, from Nathan, came up with the idea of running the bundling process in the browser, right? And I was like, like, what I, my, my first reaction when Ramon comes up with something is like, that's undoable, right? Um, but every time I say that, he proves me wrong. Um, so, so in the end, he did it, right? And that's something that you should keep in mind when you, when you complain about, um, about resource registry, right? Um, Ramon and Nathan and, and Victor, they, they saved our asses when it comes to Plone 5, right? I, I can't imagine that, that we would have been able to deliver Plone 5 if we wouldn't have come up with such a solution, right? Um, and then um, at the end, when we reached a consensus how to do that, and Ramon came up with a solution, right, and saved all our asses and Plone 5, Rock mentioned at the end of, of one of our, our, our discussions, yeah, you know what, I, I, I saw this like, new, new library called React, and I would like to rewrite mockup in React. And I was like, what the fuck? That, that, sorry. Um, I was like, really like, no, you can't, can't be serious, right? I mean, we will never like being able to ship anything. Um, I'm not sure if I would, would be able to time travel if I would like travel back and say, Rock, you were right. That React would have been like a great choice. Um, it was like way too early. React was really like out for lo like a week or so. Um, but yeah, I wonder how that would, would have turned out. But anyways, um, I think that the time was not ready. And if you look back, what we have in mockup and pattern slip right now, we have Bower, which has been declared that like two years ago. Require.js was, was just the emerging thing back then. Now it's like totally dead. Nobody's using it. Um, and our entire stack is, is like totally outdated, right? Um, so I think that, that the time was not ready for that. The Plone community was certainly not ready for that because I, I can't imagine that, that we could sell um, like, uh, like external like JavaScript bundling uh, to, to the Plone com uh, community back then. And JavaScript was also not ready, right? Because like all the tools that we had back then like went away, right? Um, so we went with, with the resource registry. Um, though we have now the situation that, um, that at Kit Concept, even though we have developers who are really experienced and fluent in, in, in React and Angular and other and jQuery and whatever, um, we, we, we are scared to, to touch mock-up patterns, right? Because it's, it's just, just so, the technology is just so old, right? Um, so usually what we do is rewriting that thing from the scratch in, in React because it's faster than like touching existing, um, uh, uh, existing markup patterns. Um, so, so, so that's a problem. Um, though, as I said, I was really reluctant to all that JavaScript thingies uh, and really opposed to it uh, until I hit a wall myself in a project, right? Um, and that was actually in 2014. Um, we built a, an application in, in Plone, a large application, and the client wanted to use the, the content that they created in Plone for telephone support. Um, so they had people on, on their telephone support folks, and they, they had people on the phone, and they had questions, and they had to like search and browse in the application. So search was easy. We we plugged in Solar, so we had blazing fast search. Um, but browsing was a major problem, right? It was just not fast enough. Imagine if you have somebody on the phone, and you need to browse through extensive like content. It needs to be like instantaneously. Um, so. What I always did was like lazy loading um, stuff with, with jQuery, right, with an Ajax call to, to make a better user, first load like user experience. But that, that did not work out, right? So I recall that there were like new frameworks like that put code in, in the front end. Um, and I was, um, uh, I was technical lead back then in the project and I had like, I had a team of people that were unexperienced with, with JavaScript and I had like a few days to make a decision, like a technical decision that, that would save the project, right? So in the end, we, we, to make a long uh, story short, we went with Angular, Angular 1 and writing custom endpoints in, in, in Plone, right? That, that's pretty easy, writing custom endpoints. You just create a browser view and then you set application JSON, return JSON and, and you're good, right? So that solved the problem of our client. We were able to uh, provide the client with an application that, that was loading really fast that allowed them to, to browse through it really quickly. 
Um, then something happened that's, that's uh, wildly called uh, JavaScript fatigue, right? Uh, the feeling that you have a new framework every, every, uh, every single week, right? That, that like, scares people away from, from JavaScript. Um, the problem is that front-end technology will always move faster than back-end te technology. In my opinion, it came down to like having, we have in the JavaScript world now three like major and stable um, uh, front-end frameworks. Um, so it's not that bad any longer, I think. Though front-end technology will always evolve faster than the back-end technology, right? So what we want is a stable back-end and a, a, a front-end technology that can adapt to new, to new things, right? That will happen. Um, so um, after that project, I started to build Plum REST API to decouple the front-end from the back-end. Um, and to being able to expose the stability and the security of the back-end to modern front-ends and have there the speed and the, the modern libraries on, on the front-end. So that, that worked well. We just uh, released uh, Plum REST API 3.5.0. Uh, um, it's stable, as, as, I, as I told to Eric. It's boring technology. It, it exposes like, everything that, that we, we value, and it allows us to use the most modern frameworks. Um, then we had a large internet project, where Plum was just one of several different systems. Um, the client asked ask us to build a un unified UI for all the different apps that they had. That was not only Plone, which provide like DMS and CMS functionality and social internet functionality, but they also had like a mail application, calendar, chat, you name it, right? Um, that, that, that project was quite, quite large, but it worked well for us. Um, Angular 2 worked well in, in, in our project. Um, we had a few scalability issues. Uh, the Google release policy in like the alpha phase wasn't like that that good because they changed and replaced all the, the stuff in the alpha and beta phase. But in the end, it, it worked fine um, for our use case. Um, though there were there was one problem that that we were pretty aware of. Um, Plone has two major um, use cases. One is internet. The other is public websites. Um, and if you if so Angular 2 worked well for, 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 for the internet use case. If you have a public website, that's a different thing. Um, if you have a public website, um, what will happen if you have an Angular 2 app or like any, any server side, uh, any client side JavaScript application is you will bundle all the code on your front end and that, that bundle will be huge, right? You can try to cut it down, but it will still be huge. So what will happen if the user, uh, uh, what happens if the user first um, uh, accesses the site? The, the, uh, it will load the, the browser will load the HTML page and then it will have to load the entire bundle. And that will take time, right? It has to load the bundle and then it has to execute the bundle and that takes lots of time. In an internet application, you can easily like fake that because you, people need to log in and you, you can use that time to, to lazy load that bundle. Um, but for a public website, that's like just impossible, right? Um, uh, another problem is uh, uh, search engine optimization or, or that, that you're actually found on Google. Um, we started to build our uh, company blog in Angular 2 um, because the Angular folks were like saying server-side rendering works and you can do it. So we were really enthusiastic and I like started to build um, build a, a blog in Angular 2. I wanted to so I, like build it and ship it, so I did. Um, but over like two years, Victor and I both tried really hard to make it work. Uh, and we didn't. And we even had access to the Angular framework team and to like people that are really experienced. Um, uh, but we couldn't make it work. Um, I know that Eric Berhold, like still tells us that this is possible, but it, it didn't work for us, right? So we somehow lost a bit of faith in Angular 2. Um, it became for, clear for us that Google, that, that Angular, uh, in Angular development, Google, uh, the, the priorities in Angular are, are Google and their internal usage first, and then, then the other users, right? It, it, I, I still think that is a good choice for, for internet, but it wasn't back then a good solution for our public website. Um, and uh, so we didn't have a solution for public websites in Plone, but of course we wanted to, to use modern technologies and modern UI as well. Uh, so it all started um, with a joke. Uh, in Bucharest, Ramon, uh, Nathan, and I gave a talk about headless CMS, and we were really like, I recall Ramon like hacking on Angular 2 around like the breaking changes in alpha, whatever, um, and we were giving a presentation, and we were doing that like, we weren't really doing a pillow fight, and um, Paul, that, that slide is just for you. Um, 
we, we're all friendly folks, right? But we had like uh, different developers had different preferences, right? And, and Rob, uh, uh, Rob always had a strong preference for React right from the start, right? Um, so we were discussing and like joking about it. And on the stage, um, I, I announced that, that Rob will will like um, uh, will uh, will implement a, a React front end, right? We were working on an Angular project, and and Rob uh, and uh, like announced that Rob will. Um, start on a React project, and it was a joke, right? Um, but um, at the Beethoven Sprint in Bonn, uh, Rob and Roll actually started to build uh, Plone React. Um, Plone React does not have the problem. Uh, um, for us, we run into, uh, with the Angular 2 project, we run into a few scalability issues. I won't go into, the de into detail, um, but the unidirectional data flow uh, it was, was, was solving kind of like that, that problem. Um, that was one thing that that dragged us to 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 Plone React. Another thing was that server side rendering works. I still don't know if that was just like because Rob, uh, Rob is a really good developer or if that like just works out of the box. But but it worked, right? Um, what? Okay, n not not so so yeah, it, it just works. Um, uh, uh, one other thing that really impressed me was I, I was managing a large team working on Angular 2, right? And we were making good progress, but I was really, really impressed by the progress that, that Rob and Roll were, were doing with Plone React. They basically built that thing in like uh, one or two weeks, a prototype that has lots, has lots of features, and I was aware how much work that was, right? Um, another thing um, that really impressed me in React was an upgrade from, Plone, uh, from React 15 to 16. They basically rewrote that thing from the scratch, and the upgrade uh, was really, really smooth. And when you compare that with the alpha and beta phase that we had in Angular 2, which might be unfair, but that was what we experienced, um, that was really like something that, that impressed me, right? Um, so um, we just went with our first, uh, when, when, our, when, when one of our clients approached us to do a public website, we just went with Plone React. Um, uh, so the, the client asked us to do a portal for, um, for volunteers that help refugees to like learn German or talk to the authorities, so so it's basically a combination of a learning uh, management system and a content management system, right? So our client wanted to to allow the editors to to um, not only manage content but also um, uh, managing like multiple choice questions and like flip charts and all those kind of like different things, right? Um, so we went with uh, with Plone React and. Um, financially, I have to admit it was a disaster, that project, um, because of course we had to put way more effort into that project. Um, uh, but from a technical point of view, it was, it was really great. I mean, it worked out, and like, the fun that, I, that, that we had in the project um, was, really, was really awesome, right? If you see your developers being happy because they work with, like, with good technology that allows them to build things fast, that was really, like, uh, that was, like, really like good to see for me, even though I, I didn't have the chance to get my hands dirty in that project, but um, that was really that, that, I, that I liked uh, very much. Um, so the project went fine, client were, were, was happy, we delivered the first project, uh, all, all went good. Um, though we had one problem, um, reusability. Um, Plone, uh, Plone React um, is, is an app, right? And in the React world, uh, people are used to like building a product or an app, right? They're not used to, no, nobody, it seems nobody's used to like building a CMS-like application that allows you to theme and to override stuff, right? It's really, if, if you talk to people in, in the JavaScript world uh, about that problem, they, they don't have that, right? Because they, they just built either a product or an application, but not, not something that you need to theme or where, where you need to override things, right? So that, that was a problem for us, that Plone React was, wasn't a library, right? It was a thing that you could like do a git clone and then you can customize it, and then then that's it, right? Then, then you have to manually like copy over stuff if you, if you want to upgrade that for, for your client. Um, so we needed to have Flown React working as a library and we, we needed like to being able to override um, components. Um, as you can imagine, we, we managed both. Uh, I r recommend going to Victor's and, and, and uh, Rob's talk um, about uh, theming uh, Volto and, um, uh, and uh, the extensibility story. Um, so, 
when we did the first, when the, like another client came came to us and wanted a, like a public website, um, it was one of the like leading suppliers for bakery products in in, in Germany. So it's a, like a business to business um, uh, use case. Um, they wanted a relaunch for for their company website, which we worked on for like like uh, uh, for the last like seven years with the old uh, Plone Four website, I think. And they wanted to to do a like makeover. Um, they have an extensive database, a solar based search. Um, so a larger website. Um, so we went to uh, we we went also with with Plone React. Um, Victor and I will give a talk about those two projects if you want to have more more insights um, uh, to that um, to solve the uh, the extensibility and reusable story. Victor creates a poor man approach of what we what we have later to make it work that we use Plone React as a library. In that project, we were able to use Plone React as a library at first. Um, then uh, we had a, we, at the same time when we worked on Zelandia DE, we had a Google Summer of Code project um, from from Nilesh um, to to um, build this Create React app that I showed you earlier, which allows you to just like call Create React app and it will create some kind of like theme policy product, right? And we wanted to have something for Volto as well, so he worked on that, and uh, um, it, it, in the end it worked out quite nicely. He will give a talk about that, so I recommend to to go to that talk as well. Um, so coming back to the expectations that I, that I um, talked about earlier. So we successfully built a large internet application with Angular 2. Um, we sh successfully shipped two public websites with React. Um, and I would like to, um, to talk about the expectations that are raised earlier if we, if we, are, if we are there yet, right? Um, so exposing Plone's core assets, which I talked about. We have a stable and mature core. Um, with, uh, with, which is reliable, which is uh, secure, thanks to, um, uh, to Philip and others, it, it runs on Python 3. Um, so I think we're all good there. As said, Plone, React, uh, Plone REST API is boring technology, um, so um, check, in my opinion. <laughs> um, second uh, group is, 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 is users. So we can, we can have bla blazing fast uh, loading time with either Gatsby JS um, which is another, which was another Google Summer of Code project where you can combine Gatsby JS with um, with with Plone, uh, and also with with Volto, right? It's uh, it's super fast to switch between the sites because Volto has server side rendering, um, and of course we can use the latest uh, UI and widgets libraries that we have, which is like semantic UI in our case. Um, again, go to Rob's and Victor's talk if you want to know more about it. The, the other thing is, uh, is the editor experience, which I talked about. We have, like, we have the Pasanaga editor, which is based on Draft.js from Facebook. We have the Ori editor, which Nathan started to integrate it in, 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 uh, in Volto as well. Um, and we have the Gutenberg editor, which we had a look at, but like three individual developers uh, came back and said that like, the the, the, the code is not like flexible enough and the, the code quality is not, not good enough for, for, for our use, use case, right? Um, so I will, um, I will briefly show the editing experience from the, from the Zelandia side. It's just a like, quick sneak preview. Please go to, to our talk or to Rob's talk um, if you want to see the, the, the full thing, right? So that's your locked in user. You go to the app menu and here you have, um, oh crap, sorry. <laughs> Um, so that's that's the locked in menu. You go to add menu and you see basically the same that you see on, on the um, medium editor, right? You can type in right away, you can type in a title, first line is the title, second line is the description. Then you can just hit the return button after that and you get to the next um, next field. So you can you can paste uh, or enter content. Um, if you want to add a photo or a YouTube video or other content, you can just like click that add button. Um, it will upload the, the picture. Um, that takes a while, four megabytes or something, that, that picture. So you can change the, the appearance of the, um, uh, of, the, of the picture. You can drag it, drag it um, uh, up and down if you want. Um, and we, are far, we, will, we will far more, um, uh, um, oh yeah, you can, you can do uh, like inline, um, uh, inline styles. Um, you can add um, uh, headline styles if you want. That's all like inline, the same as, as both. Um, uh, Medium and, and Gutenberg, and if you hit the save button, you basically see the same, 
uh, you have to, the exact same view, right? So th this is in-place editing how it's, how it's supposed to be, right? Um, the other group that I mentioned is developers, right? Um, I already showed you uh, Create React app and what it can do, right? So Create Volto app is, is basically the same. We can do the same, right? So we already have that, so check. Um, so basically we're at a, I think we're at a great like, time in, for, for Plone, right? I mean, uh, we, have, we have a huge set of, of existing libraries and open source frameworks at our hands in the JavaScript world. Um, we have a, a, a basic application, which is Volto, which allows you to use the latest uh, frameworks and libraries. Um, we got the stability of Plone exposed via uh, Plone REST API. Um, we got the, so we got the stability, we got the experience as a, as a community. We have the foundation and all the, all the good things that I mentioned um, earlier, right? So we have all we need to, to get started, right? So if you want to like, start today, uh, go to, as said, go to Rob's talk um, about Volto, uh, to Victor's and Rob's talk about extensibility, Victor's theming talk. Ramon, uh, Victor, and I will talk about the two Volto use cases that we have. Ramon gives two talks about Guillotina, uh, if, you, if you want a, a, a super scalable backend for, for Volto. Um, Nilesh will talk about Create React App and AJ uh, about Gatsby JS, right? So lots of cool things to learn. Um, Rob Roll and uh, uh, Victor gave a training on, on, on Volto um, during the conference. Um, if, if, you, if you're interested in, in Volto training, um, please come talk to us. We can also like imagine to give, give trainings if people are, are interested in that. If you want to try out um, Volto, go to volto.kitconcept.com. Um, uh, you need to log in. Uh, login is admin admin. It's a Docker image, so you can do whatever you want. It will be like perched. Um, don't try to register. Um, we did not. Uh, we did not add a mail server there, so just use admin admin. Um, try it out. Let us know if you run into any problems. Um, though it, it does not run on the latest version of Volto. It's like, it's a, it's a like previous version, but uh, yeah, give it a try, let us know. Um, so we are right now at, as a, at a stage with, with Volto um, where we're still like looking for early uh, adopters. Um, we, as I said, we did like two or three projects with, with if you count like Angular uh, in, um, and we are looking for, for people and companies to, to join our efforts, right? So if you're a company or a developer who wants to pick up Volto, please come talk to us, talk to, to, to Rob, talk to Victor, talk to me, to anybody else who's involved. We're really happy to, to help you. Um, if you want, uh, want a Volto training, also talk to us. We're happy to share everything we have. Um, Rob and Roel um, up, uploaded uh, their training to, to Plone Training, right? So you can just go there, try it out. Um, if you're a client uh, and you're interested in doing a project, please talk to us or like uh, other companies that are interested, right? We, we as a company or we as like developers, we are really interested that, that, other, uh, uh, that other companies and developers pick up, um, pick up Plone React. Um, and um, that was about it. Thank you. Thank you for the nice presentation. <clears throat> um, I think it's very good to see how the future involves in the development. But in the last few months, I've talked a lot with other universities, with other larger companies. And the first feedback I get from the universities that now using WordPress is the first thing they will deactivate is Gutenberg. Why? Because in corporate identity-based solutions, there is one thing you should never allow, the editor to modify the layout of the page. Plone has been used almost in, title, in environments where corporate identities, where large enterprise usage and so on is in there. A better user experience than we have now is important, but things like Pastanaga, the editing experience and everything is 
just one element to improve. The other thing is to make a consistent uh, improvement of the overall, because we have so many features like collections, the workflows, and so on in the system that also needs to go in line with that. So the question for me is, how will that go with Plone and Volto, or will Plone then be not anymore the decision for larger companies? What's the aiming target audience? Okay, l l let me split that up. Um, so first thing is um, regarding um, corporate ident identity, and, and to be honest, I couldn't agree more on that, right? Um, wh when I work with clients, I usually try to reduce the uh, the amount of things that, that regular editors can do as much as we can, right? And that was also one of the reasons why we started with the editor with like a, re a really basic text editor at first, right? Our, our first uh, idea was to create just a medium editor, right? That just allows you to create paragraphs, images, YouTube videos, so n nothing more, right? And um, if you come to the, the, our use case talk, you will see that for Zelandia, um, Actually, I showed them like all the features that 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 we have and and, and can like provide them with, right? And they, they basically said, "Oh no, you know what? We don't need that. We don't need like the front page does not need to be editable, right? At all. I mean, we will just like show the news there and th this th this here. Uh, in the end, we made it like the text editable, but but not the entire page because they were uh, they were a uh, asking a design agency, right? So if they want to actually change the content on the front page." Um, they have to ask the design agency first to get a new iteration, and then they can change it. So it's, it, they don't need it, right? And for the other parts, we built like quite complex widgets, but they were all from the design agency, right? So the design agency gave us a long um, example of, of a page, right, with the, with the elements, and we just created exactly the same elements that they had. And that was like lots of custom development, which we couldn't like push upstream because it was like custom for that theme. Um, but um, but I, I, I don't. I believe that that we don't need all the flexibility um, that that a solution like uh, like Ori Editor or Gutenberg uh, provides. That we that we have to add that to Plone, and and maybe we shouldn't even. Right. So we're all on the same page. Um, second second part of your question um, is about like large um, large uh, um, organizations. Right. We we at Kid Concept we have a few universities as, as clients as well. We know we know their use case. Uh, and it's it, when I go to university or other larger larger um, organizations that have existing clone sites and they have to like run s like 600 instances or 300 instances. I don't go there and, and tell them, hey, go with like jump on that, go with like with Walto, right? That that that's not the right case. They have to wait longer. They have to be co more conservative on that. Um, though I think that especially like things like Gatsby, right? That that is used. Asco pushed that very hard because. That that was something that helped them a lot at the university to being able to publish subsites, right? They can just put it there, and they don't have to maintain that after they they um, they, they build it, right? So so I think that even universities or large or large organizations um, can actually use parts of what we have here. And one of our plans was always that we we have we have React in core, right? So you can basically grab. Um, components from Plone React and integrate them back into standard Plone if you want, right? It's not that hard. And we are open to do that. At Kit Concept and like in our group that's pushing Volto really hard, we, we want to focus on, on, on Volto and Plone React, right? And I, I try to convince like all new clients to, to go with Volto, but that, that doesn't mean that, that we don't do like uh, old school Plone project if the client if that's the better better fit for the client right so in the end every every client and every developer every company they need to decide which way to go but what we want to offer with with Volto is 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 a way to being able to to really build cutting edge um, state of the art websites which might not be what a university needs right at at that point I think in the future they will. Uh, because that will will further evolve, and like in five or six years, there's no way that universities, in my opinion, can still like ship like old old school site, right? But they have more time, right? And they have different trade-offs. Um, so there's no no easy solution for that, and and Volto is just like one option that you have, right? Or Gatsby, or all the other things that I mentioned.
Um, so just to follow up on that, like I totally understand that big high paying clients, they're going to, you know, often want their branding as important. But then you have the, the smaller sites uh, where you've only got one or two editors and they kind of want control of the layout and so on uh, and don't want to have to come back and keep paying for it each time. So is that, I mean, I know there's two competing kind of ways of doing that. Is there a plan to make those two different um, ideas work within it or is it only ever going to be sort of let's make it simple and locked down? Um, absolutely. So I, um, I, I think I, I, I had that slide last year. Um, I, I really love that like agile, th that idea of agile development that you first like build a scooter and then a bicycle and then a car, right? And that was always, um, always my idea. Uh, and I put those pictures on, on the wall at our office when we worked on, on Volto, right? I wanted to have the medium editing experience first then being able to add more like uh, things like like images like place them and then then at some point I'll also allow things like gutenberg does right more complex um, more complex uh, parts of the website right so it's totally on our roadmap but um, I'm not 100% sure if we, if we really want that, right? It depends really on the use case, on the clients. And we could bu build Gutenberg, right? We could, like, we could try to match that, but, I'm, but actually that's not what I'm aiming for. I, I think that's more that, um, that uh, user friendliness is more important than features. And, and on the Gutenberg editor, I think that's a good example of an editor that has all the features, but that's not what, at least personally, I'm aiming for, right? I, I think we, we need, for Plone, we need something in the middle to be between like the maybe university use case um, uh, and, and like a super complex like uh, 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 page layout, right? So it's definitely on our roadmap, but we have to like iterate and reevaluate all the time to see where, where Plone fits in. Uh, okay, we're, uh, we have to make this a little bit quick because I think we're out of time. I actually have another question, or I had the question before, but you didn't answer. The one thing is the editing experience. And I said before, it's important to get a better experience than we have today. But editing is just one thing. Plone is about content managing. So it's all the other stuff. So saying, giving the keywords for a content type, giving all or from when to, or from which day to which day the content should be presented, uh, doing the workflow that. start and everything. And even that, well, the content management uh, features are in there, but having it in a way so that the user experience on managing them is also one thing we should improve. And is there a vision in your think how to get that in an easier way to the people that's that's super hard i mean Im imagine like a like uh having this in place editing um that i just show for the page for for an event right where you have to choose the the, the date um how would you like do that in place i mean that's or or like the the the, the publication date right where, where i mean you don't even show the publication date right so where would you like have that in in place editing the, the only way to do that is to have a settings like we have and, and being able to edit that. And this is what we have, right? So, so we, we basically, at, at the, the first iteration that Rob built was basically like the same, um, the same editing experience that, um, that we had in Plone, right? And we matched that. Um, I think Volto pretty much matches the core functionality um, of, of, of Plone. So we all have that and we're open for suggestions how to improve that, but that's, that's a really hard problem. Um, uh, and, and I think that's, that's independent of the question to, do, to use if you want to use Volto or Plone because as, said, as I said, we, we match the functionality already.